Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sin we might live for uprightness, trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to the calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, O oh God, mercy. Help us to trust your power, to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of the abundant life given in Jesus Christ. have gone astray, but now we return to the shepherd and guardian of our, of our souls. I declare to you, in the name of the risen Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Believe the gospel and be at peace. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us all pray together, saying, Glorious Lord of life, by the mighty resurrection of your Son, you overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we who celebrate with joy Christ rising from the dead may be raised from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from Acts chapter 10. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be more plain. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel that through Jesus Christ, everything is put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere, among everyone. You know the story of what happened in Judea. It began in Galilee after John preached a total life change. Then Jesus arrived from Nazareth, anointed by God with the Holy Spirit, ready for action. He went through the country helping people and healing everyone who was beaten down by the devil. He was able to do all this because God was with him. And we saw it, saw it all. Everything he did in the land of the Jews, in Jerusalem where they killed him, hung him from a cross. But in three days, God had him up, alive, and out where he could be seen. Not everyone saw him. He wasn't put on public display. Witnesses, had been carefully handpicked by God beforehand. Us. We were the ones there to eat and drink with him after he came back from the dead. He commissioned us to announce this in public, to bear solemn witness that he is, in fact, the one whom God destined as judge of the living and dead. But we're not alone in this our witness that he is the means to forgiveness of sins is backed up by the witness of all the prophets.
from Paul's letter to those in Corinth. Now, siblings, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the disciples at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. <coughs> for I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. lesson according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put, put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally. The other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? 
They've taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father to put God and your, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord God, our strength and redeemer. This prayer we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited. So just letting you know in the sound booth, I'm coming down. Because I'm so excited to see you all. Hello. Good morning. We have people like almost in the front row, Leanne. You're not alone, this is great, hello. You must not be Presbyterian. They all sit in the back. Oh, you are awesome, good to see you. Hello, I'm Pamela. For those of you who are here for the first time, my name is Reverend Dr. Pamela Anderson. There is not a red bathing suit underneath here, so I'm just letting you all know. But it's good to see you all, and we wanna say welcome, hello. It's good to have you here. So welcome to this Easter morning. Hey, Kayla's here. This is great. So it's so good to see you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So again, my name is Pamela, and this is Lakeside Presbyterian Church. And we want to say thank you to Don Scott for this amazing music, for this incredible orchestra and choir. So can we, first of all, just give them a round of applause. So thank you so much for making the show and the chef's kiss right there, right? So here we are. So thank you for giving me that opportunity to be able to greet you all. And just we just want to say welcome. And please make sure to stay afterwards. We have 300 eggs. And like last week, we only had three kids here at church. So they knew they were going to get 100 eggs each. So I'm so glad that there's more kids that are here. So we want to say welcome. We are so glad that all of you are here on this Easter Sunday. And a girlfriend of mine sent me an Instagram post yesterday, which really cracked me up. And it said, YOLO, you only live once. And it had a picture of Jesus. And underneath it said, just kidding. <laughs> I know, right? Isn't that good? 
So here we are on this day where we're celebrating resurrection, new hope, and new life. And we hear in these four different Gospels, four very different renderings of the resurrection story. So it's sort of like, how do we do this? They're all so different. Matthew is really interesting because there's this big earthquake that happens. So this big earthquake happens, and an angel comes down from heaven and then rolls away the big stone from the tomb and sits on it. Wow, that's amazing, right? And then in the book of Mark, the women come to the tomb, and they're crying, and they're sad, and then suddenly a man appears to them, next to them, and says, women, why are you crying? When we look at the Gospel of Luke, we have two angels gleaming and white that suddenly appear next to the women as they're crying. And John's gospel, to me, is the most interesting, and I'll tell you why. What we find here is really specific. There's two angels that show up as the women go in and they look inside and they see in the tomb where Jesus' body has laid, and it's so specific. It says that there was an angel at the foot and an angel at the head. So one of the things, for those of you who are here for maybe the first time or you haven't been here for a while, um, I told everyone last week on Palm Sunday that this is going to be the longest sermon ever that I've preached, right? Where it began last Sunday. So you all are lucky. You're getting to the conclusion, right? So it really begins with Palm Sunday when we have this grand entrance and we've been having church every single day of the week as we've been building up to today. So here we come to this conclusion. But what's interesting, because I started this job in September, and really I probably would say, for those of you who have been with me since, since September, the, you all, congratulations. <laughs> this is like a really long sermon, because I've been mentioning this now for months, and I've been realizing this is a really long sermon. Because what I keep talking about is the Ark of the Covenant. And now today, you will see why I've talked about the Ark of the Covenant, okay? So, have you all seen Raiders of the Lost Ark? Have you seen the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark? Can I get an amen? Oh, I love it, I got more than just one amen. I love it, there you go. So we've seen the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. So this is what happens, right? The Israelites, they are out in the desert and they're wandering, they've been freed from slavery, they are out of Egypt, and now they are wandering, and they're trying to find God because they're trying to get to the promised land. And now, how many of us are trying to get to the promised land? Whatever that may be for you, right? What, think about what, symbolically, what is your promised land? Peace, hope, maybe a stable job, a good relationship, health, Whatever that is, whatever your promised land is, this is what the people are trying to get to in their life. Happened for them all those years ago. It's happening for us now, right? So they are wandering around in the desert. And how many of us wander in our desert? They've been doing it for 40 years. And they've been carrying around this big gold box. And inside this big gold box are three things. And what are the three things? Go ahead and, go ahead and name one. What, manna, yep, what else? Aaron's staff, and? Mark, what is it? My, my husband was on Jeopardy. Where is he? I can't remember. <laughs> it's manna, Aaron's rod, and? Is it the Ten Commandments? No, it's something else, I think. Anyway, with that, <laughs> it could be the Ten Commandments, okay? So, uh, we have those three things that are in the gold box, right, which is so important as they're wandering around, and they're carrying this all around, uh, the, it, uh, around the desert for 40 years. Can you imagine carrying that around? And so what they'd have is they'd have these two big rings that would go through, and they'd have these rods that would go through it, and they would carry it on their shoulders. And on the top of the, the, top of the gold box are two angels. 
and they're facing towards each other with their wings on either side. And then in the center of that is the place which is an empty space, which is called the mercy seat. Isn't that beautiful? And they believed that was God's presence. So God was wandering with them in their desert for all those years. The women went to the tomb looking for death. The women went to the tomb to take care of the body. When they got there, they saw that it was empty. And instead, there were two angels, one at the head and one at the foot. And the mercy seat was empty. Friends, this is the symbolic gesture that Jesus is the new Ark of the Covenant, that this is, even though Jesus is no longer here. His presence is here, but he is resurrected. Go and tell them that I am alive. So here we have this beautiful scene where there's two angels saying, look, God has been with you since then. God will be with you now, and God will be with you in the future. My dear friends, and now we come later on to the table where we celebrate communion. God's presence, Jesus' presence, his resurrected life is still here. What happened all those years ago was so amazing that we're still talking about it today. And what I want to encourage you all to do is to look for the resurrection. We can think about it, oh, it happened all back then. But we experience resurrections every single day. So I want to give you an example. Just humor me for a moment. What I'd like for you to do is I would like for you to look around the room and notice everything that is brown. Just notice everything that's brown. Notice everything that's brown. Go ahead and look around, up front, back there, wherever it is. Now go ahead and close your eyes. Go ahead and close your eyes. Now tell me what you saw that was red. Did you see anything that was red? Go ahead and open your eyes. Why is it that you maybe didn't notice things that were red? Because you weren't looking for it. You were looking for everything that was brown. Now I want you to look all around. Look around for everything that's red. Do you notice all the things that are red now? Yeah. Same with resurrection. When you start looking for it, you find it. When you start looking for hope, you find it. When you start looking for new life, you find it. When you start looking for a new day, you find it. So if you want to continuously believe that there is no hope, that there's agony, there's pain, there's heartache, if you want to live in Good Friday all the time, you can do that. But is it really serving you? But if you want to start living into the resurrection and new life and hope and saying, He is alive, wherever that is for you, wherever you can find that for yourself, what are ways that you find resurrection? So my friends, really think about that. Where is new life for you? Because whatever we think about and whatever we see, we will just reinforce with what we believe. So maybe what we need to do is just shift a little bit, see a different perspective, and go, oh my goodness, we are amongst angels. We are amongst Mary Magdalene's. We are amongst the announcement that says he is alive. So my friends, on this day, on this day, look for the bright things of life. Look on the brighter side of life on this day. Look for the good news. Look for the hope. Look for the joy. And all this day, may we remember the joke of you only live once, really? Just kidding. Maybe it's this day. 
that we can live into this new life and resurrection. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us stand and say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. God of resurrection, of new life, of new beginnings, we stand before the empty tomb full of terror and amazement. Like the scripture describes the women who first discovered this miracle, we are amazed, holy God, by your power, by your love, by your grace you extend to us and our world, even when we are undeserving. On this Easter Sunday, we bow before you in prayer, lifting our petitions for those who suffer and struggle and searching for the strength, guidance, and hope we need to serve as your faithful disciples. In your mercy, risen Savior, Savior hear our prayers. Our terror is real and debilitating, God. We fear for ourselves for our neighbors, and for our world. Evil has gained traction, convincing many that violence and war, death and destruction are acceptable means to human ends. Forgive us, God. Turn our hearts toward what is holy and right. Turn our faces toward your risen Son, whose light graces us with peace, love, and divine wisdom. On this Easter morning, let us recommit ourselves to Christ's path of peace and the road of Christian discipleship. This road is difficult and most challenging, but this road also leads to new and renewed life. Savior, hear our prayers that all who are struggling know your resurrection hope. We pray for those struggling under the weight of despair. We pr pray for those who feel trapped and victimized. We pray for those who lack necessary resources for survival. We pray for those who are exhausted and overwhelmed. We pray for those who are traumatized or depressed. We pray for those who are unsafe and without a place or a people to call home. We pray for the sick, the grieving, the loved ones we know are struggling. God of hope, hear our prayers, as well as those we name silently now before you. Strong God, we praise you as the one who rolls stones away from empty tombs and as the one who opens minds and softens hearts. We stand in awe of your power on this Easter Sunday. We celebrate your risen Son. 
as the flowers bloom this spring and the butterflies emerge from their cocoons, we cannot help but hope in your everlasting love, our strong foundation that grounds us even as the world around us shakes. And now, as Jesus taught us to pray, let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace of the risen Christ with each other and especially our guests. Kevin and Kayla, when I said look for the brown, they looked at each other. <laughs> Hello, welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness. So glad that you all are here. Kayla and Kevin, you're cracking me up. Hello. 
All right. Well, we're so glad that you all are here. Again, we want to say a warm welcome. If I didn't get a chance to say hello to you, please come and see me afterwards. We'd love to say hello. We also have a bunch of bunt cakes. So we have cake that we want to give you. And also, we have so many eggs. And so adults, if you happen to pick up an egg, it's totally fine. We want to say please do, OK? So one of the things that's going to happen um, at the end of the service, I just want to let you know some things. It's going to be amazing. But you know, it's like, this is, this is just like the intermission. This is like, you know, the, for the Super Bowl. This is like, you know, like the, the break. This is the, where the commercial comes in, right? It's going to get even better. We're going to have the Hallelujah Chorus at the end, and you all get to sing, and it's going to be incredible. Then what I'm going to ask you to do after the Hallelujah Chorus is to go ahead and sit back down, because then Don Scott is going to play Vidor, and it's so good. I had a plate at my wedding, okay? Like, it is so good. You're going to want to stay and listen to this piece. It's just a few minutes long, but it's so good. And then we're all going to go outside. And this is a tradition that we're going to be starting at Lakeside, is to take a group picture on Easter um, whenever that comes around. So we'd like for you to go outside, and we're going to just do a real fast group picture. But then we're going to give the kids the instructions on how to then go do the Easter egg hunt. OK? So it's all going to happen real fast. But again, you want to listen to this piece. Then we're going to make our way out, then do a group picture, and then eggs and bunk cake. Are you all with me? Cecilia, with me? Yeah, let's do this, OK? So um, it's going to be so good. And again, I just want to say thank you so much to the orchestra. You all are incredible. I'm a fan. And the choir, just, just amazing. Don Scott, thank you for your talent. Lakeside is so blessed to have you here. Um, so thank you for all that. One of the things, if you are interested in being part of the community, please come speak to me. I would love to have a chat with you. We do Bible studies on Thursday. This Thursday, we're just going to take a break. And um, so we won't be doing Bible study this Thursday, but it's going to be happening every Thursday at 10 AM. And that'll be in the fireside room. So we want to encourage you to come and join us for that, if that is something that you're interested in. Um, let's see. Other, Don Scott, do I have any other announcements? Yeah, I think we're going to take a collective breath after this. So uh, thank you so much for being here. And we now come to the time of our offering. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
together saying, God, you call us to Christ's mission ministry. Bless these gifts that they might spread the hope of your good news. Feed the hungry, shelter the poor, comfort the suffering, and free the captives. Bless us also so that our lives conform to radical love and faithful humility. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. Eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe, at your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. Your love remained steadfast. When we were slaves in Egypt, you broke the bonds of our oppression. 
brought us through the sea to freedom and made covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice and the prophets and in the word made flesh, you lived among us, manifesting your glory. He died that we might live and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every time and place, whoever sing to the glory of your name. Christ was betrayed. He took the bread and after he blessed it, he broke it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for all of you. Drink this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Please be seated. The table is set, and when it comes time, please come forward and know that all are welcome.
take this in remembrance of me. Drink this in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ, on this day when we remember your death and this resurrection, we remember the place where you lay, and that we are here at the mercy seat. May we look for your resurrection on this day and every day, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Peace and shalom. Please remain standing.